What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Elevation here with another episode of the JBP Elevated, where we speak on the Joe Button Podcast and all of his co-hosts on and outside the pod. I had to get fresh, your boy. I had an episode that I wanted to drop yesterday, but I was too self-conscious. I was like, nah, man, I'm recording every day now. I just started another YouTube channel, Quick Sub, uh, Basketball Elevation. It's already doing numbers. Y'all make sure y'all go sub over there if y'all trying to get anything basketball related. But anyway, I keep getting in front of this camera and I had to make sure I looked all nice. So I'm going to make sure I, I keep my hygiene up, even though I'm always recording in my car. And speaking of which, I record in my car because I do favor DoorDash and I'm always landscaping, so I'm always in the car because I'm always working. And I put it in the mount finally because if I get one, I'm finna go and just record. But anyway, LL Cool J, I love how you stand firmly in your stances. But there are a couple of things that happened after LL left because he was only there for like an hour, hour and a half. Ice. I saw Danny drop his video. Shout out to the stop. He was speaking on ice and getting payola from the sleepers. I'm not even concerned about that, but that is very concerning for ice if Joe's bringing it up. You know how you tell somebody something that is sensitive to things? And we're going to get on ice's sensitivity in a second. You know the best way to tell somebody something where you don't want them to get upset at you? Even though he alluded to being upset or Joe alluded to him not getting upset. The best way to tell somebody something serious is in jest. So he brought it up in a joking manner. But Ice, don't even be concerned about getting money and payola from sleepers. That's not my concern. My concern is why Joe's bringing it up to you that he knows. Got to be careful. I don't know what y'all signed in these contracts, so I'm not even going to speculate on that. The only reason Joe's bringing it up is because he knows that you're getting payola, nigga. So you might need to work that out, especially if he's wearing something on the back end. My bigger concern is the fact that you are so sensitive. He said something that was very interesting when he was bringing up the fact that he was a troll and he knows the book of trolls because he quote unquote invented it or whatnot. Why is it that you're able to pick and pride? I always fuck that saying up. Why is it that you're able to pick and pride at other people and poke fun at them, but every time it's aimed in your direction, we see you with that stink face. Like you want to fight everybody in the room. They're getting on you for the payola, and he already knew that you was finna get butt hurt about it, which is why he started off with, I'm just joking, nigga. These are just jokes. I wanna be able to get my shots off to you in your direction. Ish has hinted at this in the past. Everybody was trying to say that Ish was the most sensitive on the pod, but Ish was like, it ain't me, it's Ice. Y'all don't even get or let jokes off in Ice's direction because of how sensitive he is. And then he said that he used to troll people because he was bored. I'm very concerned. Why are you bored? Why are you poking fun at people when you know damn hell well you can't be poked at yourself? And another entertaining thing or interesting thing that he brought up was the fact that he didn't know anything about hip hop culture. It's mainly the music that he chooses to like. Even though he speaks like an authoritarian, I'm sorry, he speaks like an authoritarian whenever it comes to music, even though you're not fully versed in the culture of music or hip hop or outside <laughs> this nigga you don't know nothing about outside but whenever it comes to these subjects you want to speak as if you have the most influence on them but one thing i've noticed when it comes to ice is every time he says something or he's influenced by people he'll speak on it as if that's just the worldwide consensus or well, everybody's saying this or they saying that or everybody's saying this no ice i want to hear what you're saying brother i asked you a question this is pertaining to you so I've always found it interesting that most, and this isn't an I specific thing. This is just something that I've noticed throughout life. People that are constantly making fun of other people hate it when it's aimed in their direction. And then another thing that I had to bring up that I thought was interesting. They're constantly speaking on Flip, not divulging information, but they're constantly talking shit to Flip like he's beneath them. Is that ever going to get addressed? If I was flipped, the first thing I would ever bring up is I make more money than you niggas. Like to all of them except Joe, even Ish. I would even bank that Flip is making more money than Ish at this point. Even though Ish carries himself in a different demure manner since that's a running trend now. I, I just find it interesting the dynamics of the co-host. So I constantly speak on the dynamics of the co-host. But that was interesting to me that Ice is so sensitive to everything, yet he's the one. Because he here lately, Ice has been on a spicy spree. Ice has been so spicy. I've been questioning if something's going on internally. Internally. Since somebody thought I said eternally last time. Internally. 
I'm, I'm concerned. Is something happening with ICE now too? Because we always speak on Joe and Flip and Ish and Flip because it's obvious. And that's something else that I want to speak on in this video because it's obvious. But ICE, he's been spicy as of late and he's always been sensitive. How are we supposed to know anything's different? But anyway, one of the most interesting things that I saw in today's episode was when they were speaking on Imani being in the spaces and I have a whole another thing to say on spaces too but they were talking about Imani being on spaces and how he be going ham at people on spaces why is it that the things that we say get under your guys skin so much if we have no earthly idea who you are because they all jumped in on this topic because Joe said that was a pertinent question that you asked, Flip. But don't just ask it to Imani. Ask it to everyone in the room. And Imani was like, yeah, I'm in an adjustment phase. And it's a learning curve. And everyone else was like, no, we don't have anything that we regret saying on the mic. But then two seconds later, they said that they hate how everything that they say on the mic gets used against them. So if y'all haven't had anything that y'all regret come out of your mouth, how is anything that y'all said being used against you? And if there's no truth to it, it shouldn't get under your skin, right? It's just little things like this that I observe. And they all will sit up there and constantly speak on not paying attention to us or the people in the spaces or the people in this multiverse that speak on the Joe Budden podcast. Like, we're all just beneath them. But they will constantly bring up references regarding people like us, especially Danny. They constantly speak on the science. Y'all, who says that phrase? Y'all know where that verbiage came from. So they'll constantly use the verbiage, but whenever they're speaking on this nigga, they want to bleep his name out. Or they want to bleep our names out. Or they want to speak in direct subliminals to us, but they don't want to say our names. Like, Joe had a subliminal the other day where he was saying, I heard that you rapped. And I'm like, is this nigga talking about me? I'm not big enough for him to be talking about me like this. But then I'm like, all these check marks check off. And I know I was speaking on how Melissa's building up a case. Is this what he's correlating it to? But since we're not big enough for them to speak to directly, they're not gonna put names to it. And it's just gonna have us all guessing. And then they're above us. But y'all constantly watch our shit. And when it comes to this spaces, I, I don't know how many times I've said this on spaces. And I'm gonna allude to Danny's video again. He apparently isn't even in the spaces anymore, or he's taking a break or whatever may have you. And he's talking about the toxicity of spaces. I could I told y'all this a month or two ago, because people are asking me why I wasn't in the spaces or why I wasn't putting into the spaces to build my brand. Didn't we just watch what happened at Clubhouse? So you think we're supposed to put all our uh, eggs in that one basket over there in audio format that we have no control over. We don't know where this is being dispersed throughout the internet. I'm supposed to go over here and play groupie with these niggas just so I can actually talk to the people that I'm critiquing to build bridges, apparently, that I still have yet to see manifest. Everybody's over here in these spaces giving up all types of ideas. Meanwhile, there's people on YouTube that are about to get pages monetized for clipping up everything that y'all are saying in the spaces. And because y'all are contributing in the spaces, y'all aren't thinking on those terms to record yourselves in these spaces and clip it up and put out your own content. Or if you're in a space with a Danny, or if you're in a space with a Rory and a Maul, or if you're in a space with a Flip and a Imani and a Joe Button, you're not thinking because y'all niggas is starstruck in these spaces. I'm just gonna keep it a bean with you. Y'all are starstruck and y'all are on some groupy behavior in there because y'all aren't thinking financially off of this shit. And I was thinking financially off this shit the whole time. I don't want to contribute to these spaces because what's the gain? There's only the people that are leading the spaces are gaining, especially if they're branching off into other material, a la Danny. He got a Patreon now and a podcast. But if you're just in there hopping on spaces and you're not and nothing's monetized and you're in there just getting attention, what's the purpose? What's the purpose? Oh, because you want to talk to Imani? <laughs> you want to get your shit out to Imani? <laughs> Come on, man. But anyway, that's a whole nother tangent for a whole nother video. I, it, I just find it funny that they felt that they didn't have anything that they regretted to say on the mic. But then the very next sentence, they're talking about everything that they have said on the mic has been used against them. If I say I play basketball on the mic, A, I'm not going to regret that. And if, or B, if a nigga says that I'm trash whenever I bring that up, 
I know and everyone that I play with and against knows I'm not trash at basketball. So I'm either gonna laugh it off and not pay any mind to it, but I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, these niggas will throw everything against me. Like, I don't give a fuck. Do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do. And unfortunately, in the space that we're in, the more engagement you get, whether it's good or bad. Sorry guys, my doggone phone overheated. But anyway, as I was saying, unfortunately in today's society and in today's day and age, good or bad publicity is still good publicity. I finally understand the saying, all publicity is good publicity because whether you're engaging on my comment feed saying nothing but negative things about me you're still putting money and value into my podcast because of the engagement or just whatever content you're making but anyway i'm not gonna get too much further into that i did want to give joe his flowers because that's i can't too many niggas say that the originator of def jam the very first artist handed them their plaque whenever they went platinum or gold or whatever bullshit status. And speaking of which, I did want to get into that. I, I, I'm not going to hold y'all too much longer, man. Give me like two or three more minutes of your time. That's not fucked up because Joe and Ish and Ice were alluding to the fact that they didn't think that what we do, Pump It Up and Overnight Celebrity were only platinum and gold after 20 plus years of release which what was that 05 03 04 05 time it makes you think because joe constantly speaks on this with the streaming shit they say you have a thousand streams you have a thousand streams how have we ever known what the metrics are on anything when it comes to that type of shit when it comes to movies when it comes to music when it comes to the views that we're receiving on facebook and youtube and all these other social media sites how do we actually know where any of this shit is they can dictate all of this like if they have people that they're cool with they can just get it to where they're getting all the views and all the money goes into their pocket because we don't know how any of the metrics are kept ever we've never known i know nielsen is a thing and that they do audio scans and shit like that but like how do i know unless i sold it out the trunk that's why i grew up in texas i'm texas born and raised shreveport louisiana born and raised i'm both states of mine i seen the rise and the not downfall but just the stagnation of a master p and he was getting it out the trunk. I've seen the rise of a Slim Thug. I've seen the rise of a Mike Jones. I've seen the rise of a bunch of independent rappers that went platinum selling these things out their trunk in their own state. And I know Texas is huge, but you gotta think about it. These people are known all across the United States and hell, even the world. There, I live in San Antonio, Texas. There's three, four, possibly even five million at this point. People here in my city alone, just in my city. You mean only a 20th, or I guess one fifth of, so 20% of my city constitutes a platinum album. And we are all just okay with that. There's 360 to 80 million people in the United States of America. And everywhere I go, these people know the lyrics to my song. And I'm supposed to believe I only sold a million throughout the entire United States. These niggas been getting over on us for a long time. A long time. So you mean to tell me that the kids that can recite the Minions versus, not versus, but like words from the movie Despicable Me and the Minions movie, those same kids can recite every single lyric to every song I've ever released. But the Minions has made a billion dollars and I've... I, I, over 20 years, I just now went platinum. Something's not adding up. But if you go to any of these execs house or compounds or mansions and you check all the plaques and you check all the statistics and all the accolades that they've received from running the business, then you'll see where all the money that your record and your album and your content and your media has produced for them. They've been getting over us for years we're just now paying attention to it because streaming we're seeing the evolution of it and it's happening right in front of our faces so we're confused <laughs> we're fucking confused this shit is a farce dog like it really makes you think like i i swear to you i just made a youtube page i just made a youtube page and like, over the course of three days i've already seen five six thousand views 
I've made six short videos and I've received five to 6,000 views. How do I know anybody has viewed my shit or viewed my shit if they don't comment on it? And then how do I know the people commenting on my shit aren't bots? Like, I don't know any of this shit to be true. You, you just hope. I'm just holding my phone in my hand or a camera, whoever else is recording, with the hopes of people are watching this. You don't know if a single soul knows who you are until you go out in public and people start coming up to you. But then if people start adoring you too much in public and then you're in Joe's position and 20 years later, they're handing you a plaque saying, congratulations, you just finally sold over 500,000 copies. Make it make sense. Because everybody claims that Joe was a failed rapper but yet, everybody that brings up the Joe Bun podcast brings up the fact that Joe Bun rap. So how do y'all know these things? But anyway, watch the Patreon if you haven't. If you don't have a Patreon subscription, this is not me telling you to get a Patreon subscription. But if you're a Patreon subscriber already, today's episode was a good episode. And for those who don't have it, I appreciate y'all because that gives me the opportunity to make recaps like this. And then it gives y'all the opportunity to purchase it or not. But anyway... Appreciate all y'all engagement. Y'all keep running the numbers up, man. I'm getting more consistent with the drops. Uh, they're, we're growing. So that's all that matters to me. Let's just stick with it. I'll see y'all next time.